Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Zur and the Kodan Armada. Get ready? Prepare for blast Your Fortress of Solitude. Greetings, program. Man, you're alive. Your Sanctum Sanctorum. Systems is futile. Welcome. This should be the first triumph. This is where the fun begins. Proof positive that geeks have inherited the earth. It's showtime. It's time to get your geek on. You complete me. With Dave Gramellion. All right. Welcome here, everybody, to Get Your Geek On. I am Dave Gramellion, and you have found one of the most listened to talk radio shows for geeks in the United States with breaking news that we're going to be talking about right here today, this very afternoon. This is season three, episode number 25. And today on Freedom 1160 and Freedom1160.com, we're going to be talking about a great number of things. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, before I even preview it, though, let's go ahead and I'll introduce my motley crew here. Uh, if you look to my left, your right, across the radio dial, you will see uh, the new guy on the show here. We're still looking for a new nickname, something Butterfingers. dynamic. Because right now it's just hashtag Butterfingers, and, and I don't know how well we can do that. He owes us for his bet, but he is the gaming guru. He is Aaron Shapiro. What's going on? How you doing? Good. I'm still waiting to figure out when we're doing that bet, though. And then I want to sing DuckTales. Well, it's, it's on you, bro. If I do. I'll get paid till tomorrow. Then I can oh, buy the, okay. you know, right. the stuff. All right. So, so, so next week. Hold on. Week. You get paid on a Monday? No, tomorrow's Friday. Oh, yeah. It's wait. Not. No, tomorrow's no, Monday. Tomorrow's Monday. Yeah. Monday. You, you, oh, yeah. you, 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 you like lost a whole weekend there. You misplaced I mean, the whole weekend. Thanks for Must be work. a good weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. And if you look uh, further to my left, your right, across the radio dial, you will see the man spinning the ones and zeros. He is our sound prognosticator, and he is Goose. What's up? What's shaking, Goose? Oh, my gosh. It's been a crazy, crazy week. You realize next week is halfway through season three? Oh yeah, it's it, exact. It's the halfway. It's mark. the halfway mark. Wow, we're so we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. Living on oh, a prayer. Oh gosh, outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All righty, so uh, let's give you all a, a brief little rundown on, on what we got going on uh, for this half hour of the shoe. We got a lot of DC news to get into. Aquaman, Aquaman, Aquaman. It's on everybody's lips. You're going to be able to start seeing it here within the next week or two if you want to get the the early look. Uh, and man, I'm telling you, uh, these reviews that, that we're going through are just crazy good. Will it beat Bumblebee at the box office? That's the big question. Goose, you look like you're uh, going to say something. Well, I've been debating this because okay. there's a chance that we Long may have to break debate. away for an important guest when well, they get here. That, that's true. Yeah, we're kind of holding out hope on that one. But let's let's uh, let's see that. Also, so 2018 is winding down. It is that officially it is. December. We're in the final month. Of December. the year, I just realized. That. I know, right? I didn't even know that. It, where did the last couple of months? <laughs> where did the last couple of months go? I, I don't. I don't even know where the last couple of months went. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. But we so we want to take our first look into 2019. We're going to start previewing now that we're in December. We'll start with Marvel and DC. Now we're going to do gaming, Star Wars, and Star Trek later. So your first look into Marvel and DC will be coming up as well. Um. However, what? Oh, Speaking I'm Speaking of DC, well, the crossover starts tonight. Wait, does it? Elseworld starts tonight. The Elseworld with, starts with Flash. tonight. There we go. Oh, that's right. Flash kicks it off. And then yeah, and then Arrow. Arrow, then Supergirl, Flash, and under uh, Flash and Supergirl swap. That's right. However, because the, the year is ending, however, there's still a lot to do over at Dragon's Lair of Alamo Ranch. Let me talk about them here for a quick second before we dive deep into the notes. Guys, if you go to their Facebook page, just look up Dragon's Lair Alamo Ranch if you're in San Antonio, and look at the events section for December. It is busting with so much to do so not only can you go there and you can get uh, comic books and graphic novels and uh, figures and painting accessories and games but you can learn about the games you can have a great time while you're there and you can meet a lot of, of wonderful people yeah. who share your interests as well that's dragons there on alamo ranch off of 151 and 1604 all right so with that being said we're going to dive right into our first segment here of the show with no further to do and let's talk about some dc news Alrighty, so Aquaman is on everybody's lips right now. We haven't had a DC movie since Justice League. 
And it feels like Justice League was this year, but it wasn't. It was actually last year. Okay. Wasn't it 2017? Was it? Was it? Or was it? Or, or was it 18? What, I think it was this time I last year. It it might know. have been. I mean, if maybe see that's how long that's how Top much we want to blot Justice League from our memories. Is that you know uh-huh. we just we. we we just we don't even know we don't even remember anymore we don't even bother and no it has absolutely nothing to do with us you know not doing our research or our homework ahead of time shame on you for thinking that <clears throat> while my phone loads no we just I pretend mean, that we uh, do that for the sake of yes, the dramatic or, effect okay here. initial release was november 15th 2017 so, so it's so it's been there. a year since we had a, a dc movie who's called it they bumped wonder woman so to, like, to July 2020. 2020. Yeah, to 2020. So now we're we have Aquaman to look forward to. Jason Momoa was in San Antonio recently. He was, and and he uh, and he was gushing about the movie as well. And my lady proved that those abs are not CGI. Yeah, she got a little she got a little feel of those abs there. Mm-hmm. Of course, the guy works out like you know 12 hours a day and oh, gosh, yeah. eats 14,000 calories. So I mean, he probably bench presses trucks. Probably to stay, in, to stay in shape, so that you know that, that he makes sense. He bent Optimus Prime. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh wow. That, that would make sense. All right. So here are some of the early reviews, and and keep in mind, people. This is like Variety, IGN. I mean, these are big names. These aren't, uh, you know, s- small publications or anything like that. These are big name reviews. So you expect if it, if the hammer is gonna gonna drop, it's gonna drop with these big names, right? Because they're usually the harsh ones as well. Right, IGN and these guys, they're they're not known for well, pulling especially the punches. IGN. Yeah, they they don't pull punches <laughs> at all. Nope. And I, I'm curious. Before we get into DC news, can we get one show where you're I not choked on the water? You're, you're barfing up a lung or something. I actually you was choke on, on the water, water <laughs> for God's sake. We're ch- <laughs> talking about Aquaman and he's choking on <laughs> he's water. He's choking on water <laughs> right call, there because it was like, oh, it's behold the, the power of Jason Momoa. Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, would you know, like bad using comment. the force through the water to make you choke or something? Good. I think God. so. At this and point. you called him weak. <laughs> exactly. That was, he heard it. It just took some time he to heard, get here. Jason Momoa's listening right now. <laughs> Okay, so here, so here's some of the reviews. Uh, Comic Book Resources says Aquaman is a Buck Wild movie. Not quite sure what that I means, mean, but okay. I don't. I don't and know says about that. it's completely unafraid to just go for it. Okay, so that they're yeah. right. That tells me right there they're talking about it's going to be big. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be big in scale, big in scope, uh, big in, in grandeur, that sort of thing. Yep. So that that okay, un- unafraid to go for it. Good. Take risks. Take chances. The Last Jedi did that, and look how they did. Okay, all right, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, move, we'll move past that one. Uh, Sci-Fi says, James Wan has made an unapologetically bold superhero flick, mixing adventure and fantasy elements with stunning visual effects. Now, Sci-Fi knows all about stunning visual effects. Have you seen their Saturday lineup, dude? <laughs> I've seen Sharknado, baby. Yeah, it's like D movies. It's not even B movies. It's D movies. That's where you get, You're like, Mega TV. Octopus versus... Sharkadon or something stupid like that. So, yeah. so sci-fi That's where you knows. get the killing games. Yeah. Now, I've actually become a lot a big fan of James Wan recently because during October, my wife and I, we watched a horror movie every single day. Oh, wow. For the month of October. And we learned something. James Wan made a lot of horror, fo- uh, <laughs> horror movies. Right. And, man, some of them were really good. So did you watch Rubber? Oh, God. That, Come on. Uh, Okay, so that's uh, James Wan's made an unapologetically bold superhero flick with sci-fi. Screen Rant, who is, no, who is known for being a little on the harsh side with their reviews, said Aquaman is breathtakingly beautiful. Did they say the same awesome. thing about Avatar? <laughs> Well, Avatar pretty much was, dude. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to hate to say it, but you know, as much flack as Avatar gets, and I'm not talking about the Last Airbender movie because that just gets flack. That's all, and it yeah. deserves it. But the Avatar James Cameron movie was gorgeous phenomenally gorgeous it's and it holds up does it that movie's almost 10 years movie's almost 10 years old and it holds up and they're still waiting for two three four five to come out yeah i think they're working on like 14 sequels right now something, something like something that like, plus you know 885 spinoff you know that sort of thing uh so breathtakingly beautiful now here's the good one here's the one are you ready for this this is the big Ooh, one ign says aquaman is the best dc movie since the dark knight that's saying a lot. That really is. I actually have a little bit more of that review if you're interested. Yeah, fire away. Let's hear so it. So this is from uh, Tom Jorgensen's Twitter. Uh, Aquaman is the best DC movie since The Dark Knight. Creepy Puppet, which I'm guessing is James Wan's Twitter handle, delivers a swashbuckling epic full of big emotion, gorgeous undersea visuals, exciting action, and lots of laughs. 
WB should be handing the DCEU reins to James Wan. He's proven he can um, right the ship. Wow. Okay. Pu- the, awesome. the pun aside. That's really awesome. Which, though. actually, the pun is, is well played. Well, yeah. well played, good sir. Well played. Ten points. But, wow. Uh, that uh-huh. That's some really heavy-handed compliments. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really... It, I'm sorry. Did I hear something about emotion in there at some point and mm-hmm. a lot of fun? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that, that's something DC doesn't have. So when DC start, when the DC animators start doing chronological films, like yeah. films in order, the Throne of Atlantis was pretty darn good. So okay, you had right. Flashpoint Paradox, and you had War, which is basically or the or, oh, Justice League origin story, one. and then you have the Throne of Atlantis. Right. And that was a dang good story. And based on everything I've seen, this is kind of based off that. Story arc from the New Fifty Two. To be fair, it looks That's like awesome. the, it looks like the Lion King underwater to me. Looks like Black Panther it, or, or Black <laughs> Panther, yeah, underwater. There, a lot of those comparisons are there because it's a brother versus brother fight for control of the throne, and it's you know, and Aquaman he's the outcast, but he comes back to save the kingdom. Oh. Blah blah oh. blah blah blah. Oh. Time out. In Lion King, it's uncle versus nephew. Um, in Black Panther, it's cousin versus cousin. Whatever, you get I mean, the idea. We're you know our parade right here. Blood. How about that? Is that better? It's family it's versus family. It's relative versus <clears throat> relative. I mean, come on, whatever. Dang <laughs> water beat me up now. It, it is. It is what it is. But I mean, that that's 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 serious right there. I mean, this right now is raising the expectations, which I think Warner Bros. probably doesn't want. It's a double-edged sword when you get a lot of really good reviews because now I'm expecting a tremendous film. And See, if, it, if, it, if it's not a tremendous film, like Ralph Breaks the Internet, then all of a sudden, I'm going to be disappointed and I'm going to let everybody know about it. Speaking of reviews, if you are listening to this on our award-winning podcast, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe. Thank you very much. So do you think that's going to cause it to fail, though? Because now we're hyping it. Now we're putting it on that pedestal. But keep in mind, the general public, those that, that go to these movies, like 80% of them they are not on social media as much okay. as people like we are. Uh, they don't listen, unfortunately, to some great shows out there like ours. Uh, they just go see movies. That's okay. all. They just want to see a popcorn flick. So, yes. so I think this raises the box office expectations. Okay. And now, as far as Rotten Tomatoes goes, I mean, anything less than an 80 is going to be a disappointment to me. So what's what's interesting is that um, <coughs> it's the Amazon Prime members are going to go see now. it like a week early. Yep. And it's not like they're going to get into a free screening. They have to pay for it. Yes, you do. Oh, oh six days before it comes out in theaters on a, on that Friday. Obviously, there's going to be preview screenings on Thursday night. Sure. Uh, so I think by doing that, they're going to get word of mouth out early. One way or the other, yes. that first weekend is actually going to be biased. Now, yeah, this is going to this is going to be different because we've never had this before, not that I recall, where you can see the movie early before it comes out in the theater, like a week and a half early. Eight, no, six days. Six days. Oh, it, uh, the eighth. No, the eighth is Bumblebee. The eighth is Bumblebee. That's right. Uh, but yeah, still, like a week early though, you can see the movie at home, and then no, no I thought, you, I thought you, it was Amazon. Amazon Prime members have to go pay movie. Pay movie ticket prices, and to go they see in the theater. Oh, to go see in the theater. Okay, right. Okay, all right. I got you now. I'm on the. I'm. I'm tracking. The, the, you know, the guy the next to me dying. Water, is kind of throwing choking me over off. there. The water has really made it worse. I took a decongestant <laughs> to make sure I'd be okay, and now the water's like making me choke. Excuses. That's that's that should be his nickname. No, no. Hashtag, the name. hashtag got, excuses. On we got our, two. On our when we when we live stream these things on Facebook, on Facebook.com slash GYGO Radio, we actually have two now. nicknames already listed. I don't okay. mind either one of them actually. <laughs> That's pretty sad. Uh, all right, so the the expectations for Aquaman for me they're rising, and I mean I can already see. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> the rising tide puns. lifts all boats. Uh, I can see easily 150 million opening weekend. Okay, but again, I think you said this earlier. The pre-show is that going to affect the numbers? See, Are they that's counting the thing. that? I, I, I well, I don't know. you're gonna have you're not. It's not going to be as a wide release. So I mean, but, but it's still going to be what? like forty six hundred yeah, theaters. Yeah, though, it's, so. but it's not going to be like it's going to be like one or two screens versus five. But I mean, that still could be twenty million, and it's there. not going to be probably in an IMAX until opening day. Okay, well, I right, I, I, I can see it relative one hundred and fifty million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying yeah. I can see a big opening. But I, I think that first, I think that Saturday is probably going to, probably thirty million dollars. Okay, so let's yeah. look at it this way. So Wonder Woman, huge at the box office. 
Okay. Venom, bigger at the box office, amazingly enough. So I the big question is, will Aquaman be bigger than those two movies at the box <clears> office? <throat> Aquaman, I can see. And I mean, let me tell you why. I mean, we're talking 900 mil. I know. But here, here's, here's why I say that. A bunch of guys in the movie theater <laughs> um, watching Wonder Woman, kind of skeevy, right? Kind of sketchy? Yeah, a little bit. Nobody's going to say a thing about a bunch of women in a theater watching Aquaman. Yeah, that, like the same thing in Twilight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, tr- true story. I went to go see Twilight too uh, with with my with my wife. She took with, him with my oh. wife, and there were three guys in the theater, including me. And with they, were right. they with their wives and too? It was probably or, <laughs> or their or, girlfriends, or girlfriend, something like that. Three guys in the theater, and it was a packed theater. It was sold out. So wow. you can you can see a lot of that here with Aquaman. So, so I'm guessing it was probably a second or third date for one of them, an anniversary for the other, and a birthday for the other. Yeah, that's probably. Possible. You can't, you know, can't, probably. Can't rule that out. Uh, so speaking of speaking of Marvel and DC, so with wow. 2018 DC. winding down, uh, it's pretty much over. You're going to start to see a lot of review shows, year in review. What happened in 2018? What was the biggest movie of the year? What was the biggest bomb of the year? It was Robin Hood. Uh, oh you're gonna gosh, you're gonna see you're gonna see a lot of those come out, but we're gonna beat them to it by looking ahead to 2019 because it's right around the corner. Uh, Pax will be here in like six weeks. Pax South will be yes. here in about in about yeah, six that's weeks. What, yeah, January 19th, right? Yeah. January 19th, right? Yeah. January 19th, right? Uh, yeah, it's like the Something 15th like somewhere around there. No, it's like the mid to late. 19th 20th let's say six weeks just for the yeah. just, just for fun. Uh, March That's Madness so will fun. be here also we're going to start working on, on our March Madness tournament uh, again Madness I mean tournament. oh oh yeah he wasn't here for that no. one hey, you're going to love this one uh, so let's look ahead into 2019 we're only going to do this right now for Marvel and DC we'll do gaming Star Wars and Star Trek later so here's what we have coming out for Marvel next year we start March 8th Captain Marvel Marvel yeah. No, Marvel. No, just no. Marvel. Just Marvel. No. Marvel. I'm gonna call her Marvel. No, care. Marvel's no. a dude. Yeah. I know, but I'm gonna call her Marvel. Uh, av- and then we <laughs> we roll into Avengers Four May third, which we still don't have a trailer for. Oh, hopefully soon. Dark Phoenix on June seventh. Then Spider Man Far From Home on July fifth, and then the New Mutants on August second, and we're done. Once again, well, Marvel has surrendered. Well, to, to be fair. Season. Uh, only three of those are MCU. Two of them are Fox. Well, that, yes, uh, but still, is once once, once August rolls rolls around, we're done. Is Far From Home going to be in the MCU universe, though? Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's it's, the but it's going to be it's going to be a partnership with Sony, yeah. right? And, and then here's what we have for DC. Ready? That was five, by the way. Five, I'm hear five all from of them. Marvel. Here we Every go. Single one of them. Here's everything DC has coming out next right, year I'm ready. I'm on ready. the big screen. Shazam, April fifth, and we're done. Wait, what? That that. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's it. Just one. They bump Wonder Woman. A boy who can become a man with the uh, word Joker is, is not going to be ready. Good. At least, at least we think. Hopefully it gets uh, So out. April 5th, Shazam, and that's it. So One DC movie for Warner Brothers, and it better be good. They're it better be good. I'm telling you right now, if that movie sucks, look out. I still don't like the graphics on his Well, costume. it looks like about 40% of the Marvel cash is going to not be good. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Marvel real quick. First of all, I'm not looking forward to the Captain Marvel movie. I what? I, I'm calling my shot right there. It looks generic. It looks cliche. That's and I'm Marvel not movie. a fan of Brie Larson. The more I hear her talk, the more she speaks, the less I like her. Because I'm it, I'm almost, done. almost, I'm almost every myself. because almost every word out of her mouth almost is political. Every every time she talks or tweets or whatever, it's always something political. I've I've yet to hear her say about how much fun she's having. I think she, I heard her say once that she was honored to wear the costume and like that was it. Uh, so but maybe they'll kill her off in Avengers Four, and they're like, oh, okay, we're gonna use someone else. Unfortunately, <laughs> no, because she's supposed to be the face of the franchise going yeah, forward. She's yeah. gonna take over from Chris Evans, I think. Uh, right. Chris Evans or Robert, Robert Downey? Downey. Robert Downey. Either one. Either one, yeah. But the, Spider-Man is going to be But the Captain Chris, Marvel Chris movie, Evans. the trailer that I saw, it looks so cliche. Yeah. Well, it looks so generic. It looks so... It was also the first trailer. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. But based off what I've seen so far, I mean, I'm not impressed. I'm not wowed. It's still an origin, and the origin stories usually take... Or they're slow. Yeah, but why does it always have to be somebody in the military who's physically incapable of doing what they're supposed to be doing until they find the superpowers, blah, 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 blah. 
I mean, is she physically incapable? I thought she was a well, fighter they, pilot. Well, they show the they show a scene where she's like going through some type of uh, boot camp obstacle course, mm-hmm. and she's trying to go from rope to rope, and she falls and she can't even lift. And well, she's all like, a, "Oh, I'm hurt." Carol Danvers has a very interesting backstory, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt because Carol Danvers is a very interesting character. Right. Yeah, which I hope translates onto the, onto the big screen. But I'm telling you, I'm, and again. I hope I'm wrong. I want success for everybody. I always yeah. do. I don't want a bad movie. But at the same time, based off what I've seen. Though really Marvel's do. I ain't impressed. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Marvel's yeah. overdue for I a bad think movie. Pretty much. Pretty much. And the stakes are so high. And they might just want to play it safe for the trailer for right now. I mean, maybe they're going to, like, a second trailer will come out soon and it'll knock it out of the park. Yep. But well, this was, like, like uh, Goose said, this is just. Your first trailer. It's never the yeah. best. True. And and I hope, well, I mean, I've seen some really good first trailers. I've seen some really bad ones. Yeah. So, I've seen rubber. So, uh, <laughs> but that was a whole movie. <laughs> it just felt like a trailer. Uh, but, but no, I mean, and again, I hope I'm wrong. And I can only base this off of what I see. Right. I mean, based off what you, y'all have seen, have you seen something truly original? Well, to be fair, I kind of read comics, so yeah. no. <laughs> okay, well, try, try, try to separate that, that. So, I mean, well, there you go. I mean, I, Samuel Jackson. Well, and I kind of like the fact that, you know, they are going straight to Carol and just having to do Marvel as exposition. Yeah. That's kind of neat because uh, that hasn't happened so, before, obviously, because they told Marvel stories in the 70s. But I think this is going to be good. I think it's going to hopefully jumpstart the black widow movie like big knock, awesome. knock on wood oh that'd be really awesome we hope actually. so uh another one I that i'm uh, another one uh, i'm sorry no, no, go, 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 time, time constraints yeah, yeah. And all that another one i'm not looking forward to is the dark phoenix they've already yeah, nobody's looking so. forward to that i mean that that has bomb written all over it the, it, it just it does it failed once already it failed once already the concept doesn't look good the execution doesn't look good oh, yeah. the con- i mean nothing about this that i've seen you weren't there when clickbait and i talked about it Ah, uh, sure. No, you weren't. You were gone that week. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, I told, <laughs> I told, I told Clickbait. I said I've seen this movie before in 2006, and I didn't like it the first time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah, and uh, there's, there's just nothing about this that I like so far. And I mean, uh-huh. and this is this is different from the Marvel Captain Marvel movie where yeah. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. I don't know why X Men movies tend to struggle. Because again, they're redoing X Men Unite or X Three: The Last X3, Stand. Yeah. But obviously they're not redoing it because it's a different story. But they're never going to match the animated no. show. No, The animated show nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Home run right out of the park. No question about it. This one just... Did Fox I, do I, this I, though? I or? Yeah, Fox, uh, Fox, Fox is on the X-Men well, no, no, license did, for a while. Since Disney bought Fox. No, this was already in the can. This was in there already. Okay. Yeah, this was a, this is this a Fox movie. New Mutants are both, are both in are the both. can. So, okay. So that I, was before. I have okay. tried. I have read articles. I have looked at, at still photos, concept art. I have tried to find something in the Dark Phoenix movie coming out June 7th to give me some hope. I'm not seeing much. The billions are built on hope. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. I'm sure that'll be fine. We, oh, have, yeah. we, haven't seen anything, we haven't seen anything from that, but costume. We haven't I'm seen anything out of the Avengers costume. Four, really. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's true. Uh, that's Aven- uh, Spider-Man's costume. Avengers Four is gonna. Uh, here's the big question: Will Avengers Four break the two billion dollar mark? If a movie, if a Marvel movie is gonna do it, it's gonna be that one. Well, we said the same thing about Infinity War. It did break so. the. It did break two billion, but it did not pass the Force Awakens. But this one is so anticipated, much more so than Infinity War was, because no true. Marvel movie has ended with a cliffhanger. The the yeah. key to this is rewatchability. If you watch a movie once in the theater and you're like, "No, nah, I'm good," it's not going to make the money. Yeah. You've got to go back and see that movie three or four or five times in order for them to pass the Force Awakens. I mean, to be honest, Avengers three was the first movie ever that I saw four times in theater. I saw Jurassic Park 7. And that was just oh, wow. to check the Easter eggs, right? Uh, the second time was to check the... No, second or third time was to check the Easter eggs. One time was a friend's birthday. One time was I wanted to see it, and I forgot why I went the fourth yeah. time. Uh, probably just because. <clears throat> yeah, probably. And then the, the new... Me- that good. Uh, all right, so <laughs> let, let's talk Shazam. We talked a lot about Marvel. Shazam, Shazam is the only DC movie to come out next year. It's all they yes. got. The one bullet in the gun. So this, no. thing, this thing better do well. No. I, I hate his costume, but I've, I'm an advocate that costume bites. I, I can see Aquaman pulling in 700 mil worldwide 
I don't know about Shazam. 200, 300 million tops, I bet you. I don't think it's going to be as good. 200, no. 200 well, 3 million tops? I don't Ooh. think it's going to be good worldwide. I don't okay. think it's going to pass well. I think all the Chuck fans and all the Zachary Levi fans are going to go yeah. for week one. Yeah, we, we, saw, we saw Zachary Levi at Wizard World in yes, Austin. Yes, we did. And I think that it's going to be comedic enough to bring people back for week two. But it's, is I'm it not sure have. about week three. Because here's the first thing. With the second week is, what, a 50% drop rate normally? Typically, Typically yeah. about 50%. Do you think it's going to be able to hold that 50%, though? Or do you think it's going to drop below that 50%? It, it all depends on the story itself. Uh, it's, it looks like a lighthearted, more fun DC movie than we've yeah. seen. But we're already kind of getting that with Aquaman. But if it doesn't have a good villain, if Dr. Savannah is garbage, then forget it, man. I'm yep. not going to go see that again. That, nope. that, that's been that's, DC's problem, though, is their villains. They that, cannot sell that. Well, DC has a lot of problems. Well, Let's be fair. One of the many problems. Exactly. Is their that's their only problem? <laughs> okay, so uh, coming up after the bottom half of the hour here, uh, we got some uh, more Marvel actual news to get into and some video gaming news. Yeah. Fallout 76, man, what Brr. is the deal? We'll be right back here on Freedom 1160 and Freedom1160.com. All right. Welcome back from the bottom of the hour news break. This is Get Your Geek On on Freedom 1160 Talk Radio. I am Dave Grimillion, and if you missed the first half of our show, you can catch it on our award-winning podcast named the best in the seventh largest city in the United States, which you can find now on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, and Omni. I got all six. Holy cow. I'm so proud of myself. All righty. So we talked about our first look into 2019, what Marvel has coming, what DC has coming. We also talked about those crazy good reviews for Aquaman and how that's raising expectations through the roof for the upcoming DC film. Now, without further to do, without speaking further of 2019 going, and Marvel, yeah, no kidding, right? I mean, this is uh, wonderful. She was here in San Antonio not too long ago at the Alamo City Comic Con, where Goose sat with her and Henry Simmons at a panel, and we are more than pleased. We are honored and indeed humbled to welcome in. Uh, you can call her. She's known as Yo Yo or Elena Rodriguez on the Agents of Shield. Done so much work. Really starting that career is starting to really catch fire. Please welcome in Natalia Cordova Buckley. How you doing? Uh oh. Natalia, how you doing there? I don't know if we, do we have her. Let's try one more time. Natalia, are you there? I'm here. All right, there we go. Welcome to the show. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you guys for having me. Now, our first question right out of the gate. Uh, when are we getting that Avengers 4 trailer? Surely you know. You have to have some inside knowledge. We're dying here. Oh, <laughs> I wish I did. I know as much as any of you guys. I don't even know what the next episode on my own show is about, let alone what Avengers is doing. <laughs> Well, uh, well, that's that's Disney. Disney is is known for their secrecy and their security, so uh, they're keeping it exactly. under very tight wraps. Uh, now, you actually reconsidered being an actress before Agents of Shield came along. Uh, what convinced you to stay on and make a career out of it? Um, well, it wasn't. I think it's been it's it's been uh, misconstrued from one single uh, interview I gave. I, I never considered dropping. Uh, being an actress, I just was considering taking some time off and maybe focusing on something else. I don't think, you know, once you fall in love with doing something or you're, you feel like you're born and meant to do it, that you can leave it. It's almost like air to, to your existence. But I did consider stopping because I was, it, 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 it just started to be very difficult for me to. I got into this career because I love the craft. I loved act, acting the the power, the fame, the money, all of those are their consequences of my job, and so be it. But I was just starting to get really disheartened uh, on the industry and, and the way it, it, it handles certain aspects of itself. So um, so it was more of me saying, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm a little bit hurt right now and I need to take some time off to not get jaded within my craft and my career. So I did take some time off, and it was that 
that month of thinking and, you know, really connecting back to the reason why I even started doing this that got me to come back. And, and I, w- I thought maybe, you know, when I got the audition, that might be the last audition I would do for a while. I would take it some time off, maybe a year or so, and I got it. So I think it was a sign of the universe of sort of, <laughs> you know, testing me and seeing how much I'm willing to do to get to where I want to get to. Now, despite not meeting him, do you think that there was any influence uh, from your your grandfather, Pancho Cordova, uh, because he was a a very famous actor? Do you think that there was any any influence? Did you think about uh, about his career and his time in acting? Um, I did get to meet him. The only thing is that he passed away when I was really young. And by the time I was born, he was already sick with Alzheimer's. So he never really got to know me or even be aware that he had had a granddaughter because all of his grandchildren were males before me. So I did get to meet him, and I remember instances with him, but I just didn't get to really know him. And, of course, I believe he's had a huge influence on me um, from what because of my love for acting and when I started doing it, I would knowing that he was an actor, you know, brought a lot of questions and curiosity as to am I similar to him, to my father and his sisters, see their dad and myself. So there was a lot of, you know, talking to them and asking them and watching his movies and and, and contacting his friends from back in the day and wanting to hear about anecdotes and and stories uh, about his time as an actor. Um, And thankfully, my father kept a lot of his writing and a lot of uh, movies, uh, not just movies of him as an actor, but movies of him as a person. And I had, I got to read a lot about him and, and, and study a lot of his, his life and, and just realize that we had really similar uh, paths and that I didn't know we did. And, you know, uh, his career was a, a career of incredible integrity and, and ethics and, even though there's this um, notion that somehow actors are gods and different to other people, he was always such a human, humane person to everyone and, and giving and, uh, and perhaps the hardest worker. You know, every person I interviewed about him that had worked with him said that it was really just almost unreal how hard he worked. He wrote over a hundred and something scripts in his lifetime. Oh, he, wow. the, the movies that he directed, he would write them, produce them, direct them, act in them, write the music for them. He was just an all-around lover of his art. And I think that's what I'm most proud that I inherited from him, that it's the, the reason why we do why we do it has nothing to do with outside consequences, but with the love of living other lives and telling stories and moving people and really what the craft is about. So, of course, there's a huge influence of, of him within me. Now, we're not looking for any spoilers. We don't want leaks. We don't want hints. We don't, we don't want that, believe me. But what we would like is for you to describe a day in the life of being an actress on the set of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. A day in the life. Describe... Um, I'll drive in, and Karen Garcia, who is our base camp PA, um, greets me. She's a dear friend, and uh, and, uh, she's uh, Mexican like I am, Mexican-American, and a dear friend, and that smile welcomes me every day. And then I walk into the makeup and hair trailer, and it's full of women I admire and love. And then I walk onto set, and it's full of a crew I'm absolutely in love with and who I love working with. So... A day in my acting career in, in S.H.I.E.L.D. right now is just being really grateful that I have a job because there's so many actors out there that would kill for my opportunity and who deserve it perhaps even more than me sometimes. So it's just, you know, filled with gratitude and and with more than anything, uh, lessons and a lot of learning. This is what I love to do. So I'm really grateful that I've got people around me that are willing to answer my questions when I ask them about, you know, whatever scene we're doing, the effects or the camera work or the sound or all of that. I just love going in and learning. It's It's been a wonderful learning experience. So, um, yeah, it's just very exciting. And I, and I get to do what I love and play pretend and 
play as if I have superpowers. I mean, what else could you <laughs> want in a job, right? It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah. Was there ever was there a scene that you were in where it was particularly challenging for you, maybe physically, or it was just the lines you just couldn't you couldn't get them right, or was there was there a particularly challenging scene for you? I always speak about this one scene that I, that Henry Simmons and I had to do at the end of season four when Yo-Yo goes into the framework to try to get him out, uh, convince him to come back. Um, and it's the scene where his daughter, who's been placed there by Madame Hydra in, fra- in the framework to keep him in the framework, disappears because she's not real. She's passed away in real life. So... Um, you know, the framework starts to disappear and it starts to disconnect. So things around us start to disappear. And it was a highly emotional scene where him, I'm pleading for him to, uh, come with me. And he's telling me, no, I won't leave my daughter behind. So we were both incredibly emotional, but had to keep the emotionality going, even though they were asking us to pause because they would have to, mid crying and you know it's not coming out of our nose and draw out of our mouth they would say pause and have to get all these pieces of furniture out of the room to make it look like in the next shot things have disappeared so we would literally have to pause the tears and then they would yell action again and we would have to be in the same exact level of emotion so that was an emotionally a really challenging scene and um and one of my favorites because I think being a classical dancer has made me a bit of a masochist in the sense that the more you beat me up at work, the better I feel I did. The more I bleed, you know, the more broken bones you have. That's a bit of how dancers are. So, um, so yeah, I, I, that's my favorite scene because it was really, really challenging. We're speaking with Natalia Cordova Buckley from uh, the powerhouse actress from Agents of Shield here on Get Your Geek On on Freedom Eleven Sixty AM KRDY in San Antonio. Uh, do you watch any of the other Marvel shows, Daredevil, Iron Fist, uh, any of those? I've watched uh, I've watched uh, Daredevil and Luke Cage. I, I, I haven't finished them, but. I've watched enough to know the shows, yes. Now, some of them, they've already been canceled. They're, they're already off of Netflix. Uh, was, was, there, was there any worry? I mean, now we know that y'all have been extended through 2020, but was there ever any real worry that they were going to axe Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well? Well, I think for, uh, for a lot of, of people, you know, in this business, it's worrisome because the, the jobs are scattered all the time. You might go on for a, jo- for a year without a job, and sometimes you have the blessing, like many of us, to be on a show for a long time. So there's always that uh, preoccupation of, are we going to come back? But honestly, an actor's career is so up and down that I just don't succumb to that fear anymore. I, 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 you know, speaking your first question about me thinking of retiring for, from acting, it you know we're all, all we're there's so much rejection within our um, career and ups and downs that if you fall into that fear you'll constantly live in a state of panic of probably not having another job and it's an energy of desperation so I just I just look up at the universe and say whatever you're ready to bring I'm I'm ready to receive so you know if it was supposed to go away and be taken away then that was what was wanted and everything happens for a reason and if not then more happy because I get to spend time with people I love working with again. So it's it's all good. Either way, it's supposed to happen. You know, whatever is supposed to happen. Now this is this is where we ask you to kind of butter our bread a little bit because you were you were just <laughs> down here Halloween weekend down in San Antonio for the Alamo City Comic Con. Uh, can you describe your experience while you were down here? What you enjoyed? How it was the the con and the city itself. <laughs> I didn't get to see the city at all, but <gasps> the parts I saw, no. I loved. I, we have no time. I got oh. there at Friday night, worked all Saturday, part of Sunday, and you know, came back to work Sunday night so I could be in by Monday morning. So sadly, I saw very little of the city, which I've heard is beautiful, and I hope to go back to. But the parts I saw, I loved. I thought it was a beautiful city, and the people are wonderful, and the con was just as wonderful as... The, the city and the people, you know, nothing in this world that we experience as humans is defined by the experience 
it, it's defined by the people of that experience because that's the energy and the energy was wonderful and lovely and you know it's just it's just really a blessing to be able to greet and thank and thank the people that have supported your show and supported your career it's something i'm very grateful that i get to do is look at the people the fans in the eyes and 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 say to them you know it's not because of us that we're on air it's because of you guys and 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 i and i think that's always it's it's very important nowadays to give worth to each other and give belonging to each other and we're very privileged to have this job and 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 the way we're paid and the way we're tra- treated is of high privilege and i believe hopefully we can extend that to more people more and more in this world and this is my way of saying thank you guys for being with us and for believing in us and keeping us alive and it's it's, it's something that's very important to me so um i always have a great time meeting all the people that love this show as much as I do. All right. Well, I think we can we can declare it here first. The next time she swings down to San Antonio, we got to do like a carpool karaoke on four ten or something. I mean, we got to show yeah. her around. There's no way I, I refuse to let you leave this city next time without seeing some <laughs> of the sights. I know a lift driver. Okay. You know a lift. That's right. We know a lift driver. Minion can take care. Oh, this would be fantastic. Carpool karaoke oh, with carpool karaoke with Yo Yo. It'll be awesome. <laughs> oh, we'll do that. That'll be so much fun. I'll I'll be happy to do that. Now, Natalia, we want to thank you for for taking the time out. We do have one last question. You're super busy, and just being able to talk to you, it, it's humbling. It really is. Uh, very glad oh, that you were able no. to take the time out here. Oh, trust me. And you know, and then I get to tell my wife that I spoke to Elena Rodriguez. She's gonna kill me. She's gonna be like, oh, no. "You did? Oh, she loves you. She absolutely adores you." <laughs> <laughs> well, tell your tell your wife that whatever she sees in me, she only recognizes it because it lives in her. So you know, we're we're regular people, even though we do pretty extraordinary jobs and all that. It's as humbling to me to speak to someone like you as you're saying it is to speak to me. So, oh, thank you. So we're just much. reflections of each other. Uh, now, uh, last question here. Uh, you've said recently that uh, the women in Hollywood are, and to use your words, unstoppable now. Uh, what do yeah. t- what do today's efforts mean for actresses tomorrow? Well, the efforts is that um, you know, as, as we've heard now, multiple stories not only of uh, sexual harassment but of abuse of power of men toward women or anyone of, of whomever. And it's, it's, it's genderless. Just I think we're facing in the world a uh, unveiling of abusers of power whatever gender, race, whatever it may be, but we're unveiling people that we've empowered and that whose who's, who's, uh, humanity is not at the level of the power we've extended to them. And I think that's very important to better this world is to start empowering people who want the power to give it back and not to hoard it. And, yes, women are unstoppable because we have been a group of people in this world that have been highly uh, minimized and made less than and it's been it's come from a culture called patriarchy and which has infected the whole world it's infected women too it it's harmful to us all because it only divides us. So when I say that women are unstoppable, I mean kind women are unstoppable. The, the women that are willing to, as we've done for many years now, decades and centuries, protect everyone and, 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 and fight for everyone and fight for everyone's rights, those women are unstoppable. And now that we feel like we've got each other's back, which was a way to keep us in control before, was pinning us against each other. Now, social media, that's where it spread the light. It's, it, social media is what we make it out to be. It can be incredibly negative, but it can also be positive. And it's a way to spread our light and to tell each other we belong and to tell each other we believe each other and to tell each other that we're there for each other, to tell each other that we have each other's back. And I think that feeling of belonging and sisterhood is what's unstoppable. It's not women, but but the belonging we're giving each other that's unstoppable. And I think now we can officially add you to being absolutely unstoppable natalia you were a delightful guest uh, thank you so much for calling in we're going to be looking forward to a lot of agents of shield and then we'll put you in some marvel movies at some point too we got to do that <laughs> well from may it go to god's ears from your mouth because 
I don't know if that will ever happen, but it would be another dream come true. So call them up and let them know I'm in. You're right. I got Well, thankfully, we do have Kevin Feige on speed dial. So, you know, I mean, we're just going <laughs> to. Well, then just call him. Absolutely. Let him know. All right. Thank you so much, Natalia. You have a good rest of the night. It was a pleasure talking to you guys, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So that was Natalia Cordova Buckley, also known as Yo-Yo, and Elena Rodriguez on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What a, what a delightful interview. I mean, just really wonderful. Yes, indeed. I, oh, yeah. I was rather honored to be part of that panel. It makes me sad that she didn't get to spend any time in the city. It we makes me sad, too. I mean, yeah, me Tierra's next time. Yeah, uh, me Tierra, where else we got to go? Um, well, depending upon time, she will if he has to Texas. Uh, yeah, or you know, uh, walk around like La Cantera. The River Walk. The, well, sure. yeah, the River Walk for sure, absolutely. Um, the Alamo. Dragon, the Americas. Dragon's Lair Alamo Ranch. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, depending on the time of year, the Hill Country. Yeah, you know, Hill that'd, Country would be good. That'd be a lot of fun, too. Ooh, All right. Oh, my gosh. It was, it was so great to have her on the show. Thank you so much for doing that. Outstanding. Yeah, Aww. I was very uh, Speaking of rejection, I mean, you know how many people, you know, we try to get on the show that uh, if y'all could see behind the scenes that the, the number of rejection letters or we just get ghosted you know, yeah. all, all the time, too. So uh, and that's it, just from potential co-hosts. Yeah. Yeah. No. Ah, <laughs> hell. So very nice to have her on. Uh, and speaking of which, you know, we might as well uh, roll on into some uh, some additional Marvel news here because there's. There's a col- uh, Collider did a, a Q&A on Wednesday. Let's talk some Marvel news. All righty. All right, and we want to remind you also about our friends over at Heroes and Villains of Cosplay. Speaking of uh, you know Marvel superheroes and that sort of thing, right here in San Antonio, Havoc is ready to to answer your cosplay questions. They are ready to accept you into their cosplay family. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can cosplay your way. You don't have to worry about being screen accurate. You don't have to worry about, you know, if your costume doesn't fit quite right. No problem, no sweat, no way will they reject you. Go over to our friends over at Heroes and Villains of Cosplay. Okay, so uh, so Collider did, uh, they announced a serious Q&A with Kevin Feige and the Russo brothers. Uh, on Wednesday, they were going to do a screening also of Avengers Infinity War where they were going to watch it with uh, it was a free event, by the way. You know, people could just the Russo in. brothers were the main draw, yeah. on that one. Uh, now, let, let the, of course, they were asked about Avengers 4, and they immediately came out and said, We're not answering any questions about when you're getting the Avengers 4 trailer. All right, even Natalia doesn't know, and she's she's on the inside, she doesn't know, they, they're not saying. Stop asking about the trailer. By the way, we have a screenshot of the Avengers 4 trailer at facebook.com slash GYG Radio. Yeah, we, we do, have a, do have a nice screenshot there. If you want to go see that, let's look up Get Your Geek On on Facebook. Uh, now, they also confirmed the Russo brothers are going to be taking a break from Marvel. And they are not involved in the upcoming Winter Soldier and Falcon series. Nope. Now, these are the guys who directed uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, as well as directed in Avengers 4, which still didn't have a title yet either, let alone a trailer. Uh, so they're taking a step back there, which, I mean, that's what, five movies in five years. I mean, that, and mm-hmm. these are serious movies. Yeah. So I don't blame them at all for wanting to take a step back, maybe nope. do something different. Uh, they did some episodes of Arrested Development back in the day. I think they won an Emmy for it. So oh, maybe wow. a little return to comedy for them. I'm going to change it up. Yeah. You know, I, I can get that. Isn't they could do the Arrested Development movie that people have been asking for. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Isn't that the one with... Uh, no, they did... Jason uh, Bateman. Jason Bateman. And um, they also did, I think, some Parks and Rec. So we could see a Ron Swanson movie at some point. Oh, God. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be good. Um, so, yeah. So they're definitely taking, taking a step back. So somebody's got to come in and fill their shoes. Marvel's going to be cranking out three movies a year. Someone's got to step it up. And I'm hoping it's... Kenneth Branagh? Kenneth Branagh, who uh, is directing more movies nowadays, yeah, uh, see his name a lot, and also the guy who directed Thor Ragnarok, John Favreau, when he's not doing the Mandalorian. Yeah, no. I think John Favreau is going to be tied up for a while. But John Favreau, they already upset anyway. John or no, John Favreau, right? Yeah, yeah, they were seven. I thought. Who did the first two Iron Men? John Favreau. That was John. Yeah, but then they upset him on the third one. That's why he stepped down. No, because the third one was horrible. Well, well, yeah, that, I was upset well, watching it. The second I mean, one wasn't yeah. that good either. I mean, let's, let's be honest. They here. upset me by making that movie. 
So, yeah. Uh, also, a little bit of sad news we do want to before the, the show... Um, before the show winds down, SpongeBob SquarePants creator Steven Hillenburg died this week at the age of 57 due to complications of ALS or uh, called Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, now, SpongeBob, I mean, just saying the name SpongeBob SquarePants well, yeah, yeah, doesn't yes. exactly inspire you know high intellectual discussion. No, but this but. show, this was one of those shows. This is one that stuck with a generation of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the Batman animated series, the Animaniacs of of its time. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I put it up there on, the, on that pedestal. Goose is like, shoot me a look like you're, you know, you're crazy. Yeah. But but this show had yeah. it had 250 episodes. It was dubbed and subtitled into more than 60 languages, including Urdu, Azerbaijani, and Maori. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, it also won 73 awards, including four Emmys and 15 Kids Choice Awards. This was a what, it, it still it, is. It was one of the well, yeah. But I'm just saying that because the show's over, they're not making new ones. Uh, but it, it was it was one of those <laughs> shows. And Steven Hillenburg, uh, I mean, wow. I mean, to knock it out of the park. I mean, you get 100 episodes, and that's considered you know praseworthy. Yeah. Syndication right there. Yeah, 250 episodes. This guy pulled off. And, and really impacted millions upon millions of people. So he will absolutely be missed. Uh, uh, we also have a little bit of a learning lesson for you. Yeah, something that you can say uh, that you know that people may not know. Uh, a new dinosaur was discovered in Brazil. Uh-huh. Which Ooh. in and of itself, I know you're... No. <laughs> you're bad people are ready to you know, go to sleep, drive off the road. But they <laughs> named it Thanos Simon Atoy. Which is named Thanos, obviously, after the Mad Titan, and Semenatoy is named after the person who discovered it. Oh, that's cool, cool. But they, but they were wondering, it's like, are, are you really going to name this after, after a comic book character? Why not? And the guy was like, yeah, absolutely. You better as believe it. As he's reading it. Thanos while he's doing yeah, it. Yeah. As, as he's getting ready to snap his fingers, you know, and half the dinosaurs will disappear or something. Uh, but yeah, so they named a dinosaur after Thanos. So does that mean Thanos was the reason dinosaurs are extinct now? Well, but, but he is a dinosaur, so if he snapped his fingers... Only half the dinosaurs see, would go away. But, see, but he was problem. one of them, though. So, okay, all right, all right. Chance. We'll, we'll have to yeah, work, it was we'll, a 50-50. You don't know. He didn't know. We'll have to work this one out later. <laughs> this will, we're going to have to wrap it up here. Uh, so for Goose, for Aaron, and for myself, I want to thank our sponsors, Dragon's Lair, Alamo Ranch, Havoc, and The Mailing Spot. Thank you for listening, and make sure to get your geek on every single day. <laughs>